again. In this video, we, we are going to learn how we can add a new user to our MySQL server and give it permissions to uh, connect and use our uh, databases and tables and maybe create some of them. Now, uh, there's more than way of doing it from the command line. My favorite way is to insert something in a table that exists in uh, uh, MySQL. Now, let me just connect using my root password, my root uh, account first. So I'm here like a super admin. What I can do is uh, I can show you a list of all databases that exist here. Databases, or all the databases that I can see as a user because I'm root now, I can see all of them. Uh, these are all the databases that I have in my SQL Server. And there's one of them called MySQL, that's the basic one in my SQL Server. And uh, um, in it, there is a table called user, and this is where we add new users. Now, to change to that database, we, I need to say use my SQL or SQL as you like. It's just a cute way of saying it, as we said. I'm using it now, telling me the database changed. Now, to have a look at all the tables, I can say show tables, and it gives me a list of all the tables, and this is the table that we want, all the tables in this database, in the MySQL database, and this is the table that we want to add uh, information to. In fact, I can even show the structure of this table by saying, uh, for example, show columns from user, and I can see these are the columns of this, of, of the, this table. Uh, there's a column called host, user, password, select privilege, insert privilege, update privilege, da -da 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 -da. and these are their type, data types, character of uh, length 60, char of, uh, of length, length uh, uh, 16, 41, and so, so on and so forth, and some other information. Now, the way I'm going to add a new user is by using the insert statement that, we're going, that we are going to learn about later on. Now, focus on this. Insert into this will mean I will add a new record in table user. Yeah, add and update these columns. Column host. If you remember, we saw the columns. We saw the columns here. So update uh, column host user password select privilege insert privilege update privilege and give them the values of local host. So the user will be connected from your local host. I can. Uh, this, this means it will only be able to connect from the local computer, i.e. where the, where the uh, MySQL is installed. I can allow remote connections using the percentage sign, but uh, maybe I, can, I will uh, record some other videos that show us how we can actually uh, allow and do remote connections on MySQL server. But now we'll stick to local hosts, i.e. the same computer where, the, where, where MySQL is installed. So the host value should be local host. Username is Chris. Password value is Chris2014. I'm using the function password, which is actually part of MySQL, and this function will actually uh, encrypt this password, as we will see later. And then I'm saying select privilege, yes, insert privilege, yes, update privilege, yes. These privileges, or these are the user rights that I want to, to have for, for user Chris. Select means he can select from tables, insert means he can insert new data into tables. Update means he can modify existing data. In fact, I have a simple explanation of privileges here. I can say all privileges, maybe, which give, uh, the user gives the user everything. Create, to create new database or table. Drop, to be able to delete table or databases. Tables or database, delete. Delete rows from tables. Insert, insert new rows. Select, just to select uh, data from one or more tables. Update, to modify new tables or grant option to give it the ability, to give this user the ability to actually give permissions to other users. But anyway, I hope that makes sense. So we're going to execute this statement and add user Chris to our uh, users table here. We would like that and we see, I'm sorry we have a duplicate entry because I've actually added that before. Uh, but in your case, this should work normally and the proof is if you want to do that, you can actually select, and don't worry about this, I'll explain this later, you can execute this statement, sorry, my phone is ringing, I'll answer that later, select host user password from user, from table user, where user equals Chris, if you just execute this, you will see the information for user Chris, and you can see
see, I'm selecting host user and password. It's connected from local host user name is Chris and the password is encrypted as you can see. Uh, this is another way of doing it, you know, just to grant all privileges maybe to some user called Chris at localhost, yes. And then after I, I add the user, I need to execute flush privileges so it automatically refreshes my SQL. Otherwise, user Alex, I'm sorry, user Chris will not be able to connect unless if, until if we, until we actually restart my SQL server. So let me just update that, uh, flush the privileges so it takes effect immediately. And then again, if you want, that's another way of granting privileges to a certain user that's the syntax of it, but I said that's my favorite way of doing it, it's up to you, we want to go this way or this way, they both, they both are the same. Now, to actually drop the user, all I need to say is drop user and then the username and where it's connecting from, so to drop user Chris for example, I can say uh, drop Chris, uh, drop Chris from localhost, in fact let me do that because it was telling me it's actually duplicate entry, so Chris, I'm sorry, we can, because I'm root now, I can actually drop Chris, and you can see now, it's empty because Chris does not exist, when I try to retrieve information about Chris, it's telling me, empty, said he's not there, why? It's because I have dropped it, so I can create it again, using this, my favorite way of doing it, and giving him those three and now if I execute that one again, select user where username equals Chris, as you can see, I should be able to see the information again. Now what I can do is I can actually quit doing control D or quit and I can connect with the new, with my new user and the syntax is like this, MySQL minus U and then the username and then minus P to tell it to ask us for a password. So what, because I have user Chris now, I can say MySQL minus U Chris minus P. And the password was what was Chris 2014. And it's telling me access denied. Do you know why? It's because when I created the user Chris again, I did not flush the privileges. So I need to connect using root again you know, these mistakes actually teach you a lot. Yes, and then use the MySQL database, and then I say flush privileges, yeah. You have an error in SQL syntax. see and then I can use, I mean I can show the databases that Chris can see. I hope that makes sense, this video is actually longer than I wanted, but everything is working now. Chris can see all of these uh, databases. Yes, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.